But um, yeah, yeah, we'll get straight into it. So anyway, while I'm while we're slowing all of that out, Warren, do you want to quickly share with everyone why we actually decided to do this? Because it was literally just a in the moment decision to kind of share your story. I, I think we came up with it either this morning or last night. Oh, but pretty much. I mean, as you know, we're running this be your own physician workshop, Ed, and um. Yeah, look, it's, I've, I've been passionate about health on the spiritual and physical level and mental for years. And of course, mainly because of my own experience and what I went through. And it's it's something I really like sharing and showing people the tools and what I discovered, the various alternate ways to empower yourself around your health. So I think we just got talking about it. I'm like, well, let's just share some of the things we've done and do some, you know, stuff right now in real time and practical time as, you know, yeah, look, basically just love to share it and help people get better. I've been in the best physical health I've been in years by using etheric and energetic kind of stuff and while working in conjunction also with physical stuff. So yeah, just, it's just something I love sharing about. Yeah. And I think it's good because I don't know how many people have actually heard your health journey because this happened like 25 years ago. I'm pretty sure before I was born when you had all of your health issues because you've obviously shared a lot more on the financial side, but now moving a lot more to the health side. Uh, I think not many people have ha actually heard your health journey, so it'd be it's going to be a real big eye opener for people um, who are looking yeah. to cure whether it's health issues like physically, emotionally, mentally, or anything like that. Um, people who feel like it's impossible, or people that doctors have told you it's impossible to cure, or is wanting to use energy to you for your own benefit, then this is going to be a great story for yeah. you. Look, there's nothing like. When you got chronic health, um, pain and, and stuff, it's horrible. Like as a kid, I was asthmatic and then I had the one before you were born that was even that was even worse. And then of course I had a few since then. And in fact, I was saying the irony of life is that I'm actually the healthiest I've ever been um in my fifties. Whereas when I was a kid and teenager in my twenties and thirties, I had ongoing health problems pretty much all the time, on and off. And then right now I'm in the best health I've been in. And of course. After a while, you take it for granted, but then you start to realize what people are suffering. And, and it's been really exciting to see people get results just by some of the stuff I was sharing in the background. And now it's like, yeah, let's just get on here and share more of it. Mm, yeah, definitely. Well, I'm looking forward to this because we've got a lot of questions prepared for you. So we can actually dive into depth on this yeah. topic because obviously it's one thing for you to share from your own story, but I actually wanted to take time to break all of it down. Um, to actually go through like the struggles you went through what you did um yeah. tips that you have with everyone and, and whatnot so the first question that i have for you here to get into this and obviously more for a summary po point of view you don't have to go into like a massive in-depth because we've got a lot of questions prepared here so more just a summary but can you give the overview and share your journey of what actually you went through like what you, you like when you first were told that your health was being impossible to cure what did the doctors tell you what were you going through at the time and how did it affect your life? Look, there's been a few different stories, really. Like there was the asthma as a kid, which I was told, you know, you grew out of it, but never really fixed, which I fixed. But the one particularly that you're referring to was when I remember the exact day. It was the 20th of May, 1998. You know, I was um, I was on my computer at work and I'd been feel at, at the tax office and I was feeling over that year or two, I'd been feeling constant building pain, like really severe back pain. Um, and I kind of learned to, you know, push through it. And then I had like back injuries just when I was playing sport. I would feel like a lot of, you know, nervous system pain when I try to type on the computer. I was learning to sit in all kinds of weird and wonderful postures. Like I remember crossing my legs and learning to kind of get used to sitting like this. And I remember the day I was sitting on there typing and something weird happened. I felt this kind of like a twang. And I knew I was in trouble because as I started to type, everything was like pins and needles and like I could hardly use my arms. So I stopped, shook my arms out, tried again and stopped. I thought, shit, I must have just over overused it. So I'll go home. So I left um, and went home, rested, had a bath. And then I came back the next day, got in the computer, all the back pain, but I could type. I thought, OK, yeah, OK, that was just a one off. And then within 15 minutes, it happened again. And I thought, okay, I'm, and I just, I shat myself. <laughs> I, I thought something, I knew something had happened. And so I booked him with a doctor, went and saw the doctor. And the first doctor I saw, go, oh yeah, I think you just got some RSI or tendonitis. You know, I could give you some cortisone if you want. And I'm like, no, no, not cortisone. Um, it didn't feel right. So I said, no, you know, I don't, it's, it's different to that. It's not RSI. It's going through my whole nervous system. And I, 
went to a couple of doctors and they pretty much said the same kind of thing. And then I ended up um, talking to my aerobics instructor because I was doing aerobics classes at the time. And she said, I know what's happened to you. And she kind of gave me a bit of an idea. Your whole nervous system's broken down and it's coming from here. Go see this particular guy. So I went and saw an occupational therapist and he made some kind of difference and I got workers comp. But to cut a long story short, um, it just seemed to get worse over the next year, you know, and I was pushing through it. I was trying to deal with it. I was, you know, and and I can remember doing various chiropractic and exercises and I could generally not type very much at all. And I had to get restricted king duties at work. And I just kept thinking, now, look, it will get better. It will get better. It will get better. And it just didn't. And in fact, it got worse, if anything. And I remember after about a year, I can remember, you know, on my birthday, you know, 5th of May, 1999, I just go, I just snapped. I was going like, no, I, I can't do this anymore. And I just fell apart. And I remember, um, going down to the river and just staring at the river and wondering how long it would take me to die if I drowned myself. And at that moment, I thought, mm, okay, this is a bit of a problem. So I, you know, I'd gone to church, I prayed, I'd done everything like that. So then I went and told my mum what I was going through and I'd been keeping it quiet because I felt embarrassed. I mean, why? I don't know, but I did. And that started a whole journey. I remember finally finding a very good doctor shortly after that who, you know, my father told me, you know, I have a feeling it's more than just your physical body. I think there's mental mind body stuff going on as well. And back then in 1999, that was still a newly emerging field and generally, you know, not really recognized. And I finally got with one of the best doctors, acupuncture specialists who knew about the area. And I went and saw him and on a referral from a doctor who did actually understand what happened, he said, now you've had a complete autonomic nervous system breakdown. He said, it's relatively serious. He said, I know what you've done. And he said, this isn't a simple fix. This is going to require a mental, mind, spirit, energy fix as well as physical. And he said, I know because I was there myself. And then he put me onto this doctor. And I remember the day the doctor looked at me. He was a bit blunt with me, checked me out. And I said, you know what's going on? He goes, well, yeah. He goes, you, you messed up your autonomic nervous. You're fucked. That was his words to me. I said, what? He said, yeah, yeah. Now you won't fix it. But he said, I can help you manage the pain and get on top of it. And I'm like, what do you mean you can't help me fix it? And he goes, look, he goes, Guys like you come here thinking that guys like me can fix it. We can't, you know. You've created this problem. You're stuck with it now. And I kind of walked out of here in shock, feeling like the heck. And fortunately, I had a lot of very strong spiritual faith behind me. And deep down, I remember going back, no, I know I can cure this. And the next day, I went back to him and had an appointment a few days later. And I said to him, look, mate, whatever you said before, it's crap. I'm not buying that for a minute. Um, if you don't know the answer, someone does. I said, one way or the other, I'm going to fix this. And he goes, okay, with that attitude, you probably will get healed. And then we end up getting on quite well, and he gave me a few tips. But that's where my whole journey really started, and it kind of got me um, onto a whole alternative health journey, whereas until then, my church background told me that anything that was acupuncture and um, you know herbal medicine was kind of you know evil witchcraft and bad stuff. And I literally did believe all that. And so, and ultimately, that if I prayed, God would miraculously heal me, because I had seen people get miraculously healed. And it just and I had had a miraculous healing myself many years earlier, but it just didn't happen. And so, yeah, look, that's how I got started. And it took me quite a long time to heal it, that particular one. But I got there by alternative health and etheric and spiritual kind of stuff and various other things. So, yeah, I could tell you more, but I'll let you ask the next question. What do you want to ask? Well, yeah, pretty much following on from that, you were, by the sounds of it, you, uh, people that know you, you know you that you grew up really religious, you were quite, I don't know if you'd use the words, but sort of indoctrinated into the health system, like you were mainly looking for traditional health, like doctors, as you were just saying there before, but then, as you said, it kickstarted your journey into alternative medicine, but what actually was the motivation that, that got you thinking that you actually want to look at alternative ways rather than what you've been doing? Um, and what were the initial steps that you actually took to find those alternative solutions? Oh, I'd love to give you a statement about this awakening and all that, but no, I was in chronic pain. I was in horrific pain. Like my back hurt all the time. My arms hurt. I couldn't type. I felt like a cripple. I, I couldn't even sit in a restaurant properly without feeling like my bum was sitting on a big fat, but on big bones. Um, I had to get a special cushion, like, a, like to enable me to sit. Um, I felt like I was disabled and I felt really humiliated. I felt really like, you know, cause I really was disabled. I was on a special workers compensation kind of um, program and yeah, it was horrible. I just remember that I, I, I was just like, 
you know, I, I don't want to live like this. One way or the other, I've got to get myself better. You know, I can handle just about anything. I can live, I can live life without having a lot of money, even though it's nice to have money. I can live life without money. I can live life without other things, but without hell, fuck that, you know, I've got to get this right. So I decided saying, I'm going to find anything in the mind, body, you know, psychotherapy journey, which really helped me and got me talking and, you know, and realizing how much stress and anxiety I was carrying. And I still remember the day when the psychotherapist told me, who was very good, very good um, guy, he said to me, do you actually realize that most of the time, you're probably not even your emotions and your feelings, you're probably picking up other people and unaware of it. And that was all new to me. I said, really? He goes, yeah. He goes, we're all connected. And he said, so when you go into a room and you suddenly feel angry, ask yourself, is this my anger or am I picking up someone else? And that was where I got into that. And then I ended up going and, you know, someone's just seeing a naturopath. So I did. And she said to me, you know, my diet was pretty atrocious, but she said, yeah, you're pretty much sugar and all that kind of stuff. It's not going to help, you know, fibromyalgia because that's what I was diagnosed in the end. You had RSI, chronic fatigue, fibromyalgia. And um, so, yeah, I just started going to anyone and everyone I could find, you know, different doctors who understood the area. Um, I just thought in the end, look, I've just got to kind of hit this on all levels and learn what's going on. So I started studying everything from Louise Hayes, mind, body, metaphysics. I got involved in communities and talked to different people. Some things I did made no difference at all. Some things I did really helped. Um, I remember a big thing that helped a bit in two, after you know a couple of years was I met this guy in Adelaide who put me through this insane detox program who really understood the body stuff. And that made a difference for sure. I went from where my body was weak and had lots of fat and kind of, you know, very bloated to where it kind of, you know, I lost a bit of weight and it kind of settled down and stuff like that. So there was a lot of different things that I actually did. Ironically, the thing that ultimately healed me and like made almost an overnight difference was energetic and etheric healing. That, that That's why I'm running these workshops because that was the thing that completely turned everything on its head. Mm -hmm. So seeing as you mentioned that, being, that being the main solution, what was actually like and you describe the moment you realized at the pivotal moment and the breakthrough when you realized that you're actually on the right path because obviously it would have been a long journey but how did you actually feel about it and what was the experience like when you realized that you're actually on the right path to healing by looking at alternative ways i started to know it because overall over i started to bit by bit just notice that it was minor shifts so i wasn't necessarily getting a lot of change in the physical pain but it was improving a little bit i was I started doing proper exercise, which I've never done before. I started doing weights. I started doing, um, you know, under supervision. I started doing more walking again. I started um, stretching, realizing how tight I was. Started looking at all the mind body and just noticing all the stuff that Louise Hay talked about mind body and how it related. And I thought, wow, all this is me or T. And then going to different programs and finding all this kind of stuff out and. I just saw the little changes bit by bit that kept confirming it for me. And then I started to notice, remember reading one time that when you're really sick, it's, it's think of it as disease, lack of ease, you're very unhappy. And it means there's a lot of mind body unhappiness going on. And I thought, yeah, I do feel unhappy. You know, I really don't feel happy about my life. So what's going to make me feel happy. And I, and I started to get this sense of getting back more involved in the time of my church and spiritual stuff, but doing it in a different way than what I've done before. And I resisted it a lot. And of course, my health got, got worse again. And then I finally yielded to it. And then, then I just kept all these synchronicities. I ended up meeting an etheric body healer who used machinery at the time and herbs and flower essences and oils and stuff like that. Now, I'm kind of like, how could this possibly help me get better? But intuitively, I just had a feeling it could. And I just got this weird feeling that it was on the right path. And then I noticed it with um, Grace at the time. She had a very bad car accident, who's my wife at the time, and now ex-wife, but we're still very close. She had a very bad car accident and had post-traumatic stress and couldn't even get behind the wheel of a car. And it'd been like that for weeks. And then one session was a ferric body healer, did 15 minutes of her using tapping and energy work, and she got back behind the wheel of the car the next day. And I'm like, that's incredible. So I said to her, do you think you can fix my situation? She goes, yeah, I honestly do. She goes, not overnight, but, you know, come in, let's see how we go. And it, it was introducing me to a ferric body using a mixture of muscle testing, kinesiology, um, all stuff. And it, it actually was showing a lot of things more to do with me having to do detoxes on my back and changing my diet and doing other kind of things. And so I did all that kind of stuff. And then it was showing up. I had to kind of sort some things out, which I did. 
got some clarity, realized I had to make a major life decision. I took a step of faith and did it. Realized, and, um, and then I remember turning up for a session. I remember making a decision at that time to be obedient to an inner call, an inner voice that was telling me to go and step on a different path to what I've been doing. So I obeyed the voice. And then about, I remember a little bit later after taking that step of faith, a few days later, I'm actually with this lady, um, the etheric body heal, and she says to me, I really feel we're ready to heal you now. She said, let's do a whole like intention to heal this today. And then of course, all kinds of stuff showed in my etheric. We started clearing things in my etheric. Next minute we're using flower essences, oils, crystals, magnets, um, all kinds of frequencies. And I remember by the end of the session, I thought, I actually feel pretty good now. And the actual aim was that I would walk out and be able to get back on the computer. You know, my back would be good and I could go for five hours on the computer a day. Whereas at that, up to that point, I could never go more than 15 to 30 minutes a day. I had to go in very short stints and things like that. And I couldn't play piano properly because it would hurt too much of the nervous system shooting down me. So I then go along um, to... Then I woke up the next day and I got on the computer, started typing. And after half an hour, I was fine. I was, you've got to be kidding me. And this excitement hit me and that, and I knew, and I, and I knew I was healed because I've been very nervous with my new, new um, job I'd actually got at the time. I'm thinking, how am I going to type there? You know, when I don't, can't type properly, but I took a step of faith and yeah, it, it healed. And that got me heavily on the journey. This was 2003 in August. And after that, I just heavily got on the journey of anything with healing, a ferric body, natural alternate and all kinds of stuff so were you permanently healed from that point on or how did it work because yeah. um, as you know a lot of like traditional medicine or solutions that you look for can provide you with temporary relief giving you a false sense of um healing yeah. but how, how was it different to to that like how did you know it was actually a, a oh, good thing not it was not different I, I felt intuitively it was fixed i just knew it and from that point on, I was just normal guy on the computer having to take breaks and stretch. And I had a couple of years later, I had a, what I call a mini relapse. Like it's hard to explain. It wasn't like before, but I started getting that same thing. And at first I freaked out and then I thought, nah, this is just a temporary thing. This will be fine. So I just went back into the same things I'd done previously. And within a few weeks, I, uh, about four to five weeks, I was able to fix it again. So yeah, it, I, apart from a brief kind of couple of relapses, by now I had the tools to deal with it. Mm. So how long did it actually take you to find that etheric body healer? Oh, it took me years. <laughs> I kind of, it took me years. I had to work the whole blooming thing out myself, Edward. You know, I, it's, it, I didn't have the luxury of going on and having a webinar and teaching like I'm doing now. It, and back then as well, you were kind of seen as a bit weird. And even my church friends are like, why would you do that? You know, that's against God. And then you would have, um, I'm contending with that and then I'm having all kinds of other stuff going on, you know, that's kind of challenging me and confronting me. And, um, and of course, you know, if you, if you go into a psychotherapist, you're seen as having a mental problem, you know, it wasn't like today where mental health is encouraged. So, but I just knew I was right. Yeah. So I mean, with all of that, cause it seemed like you did literally have all the odds going against you. Like what we said in our message, when we put this up, that yeah. everything was against you like your beliefs the people around you uh societal conditions and stuff but yeah. what were actually what was actually keeping you I mean, obviously apart from the fact you were feeling like a cripple but um what was actually motivating you to keep looking for solutions and finding a cure like how did you actually stay motivated during that time the fact that i didn't want to be <laughs> living in pain and chronic pain and having this kind of chronic feeling that it was, it could be a lifelong thing. You know, it was just, that was motivating me. And I thought, well, you know, the choice is I could go on some kind of medication and kind of learn to live with it, but I'm not going to learn to live with it. You know, I'd rather overcome it. That was the thing that was driving me. I can either learn to live with it or fucking get over it. You know, that was the main thing. Yeah. And one of the biggest things we talk about in awakening within and just generally is that um, the importance of self-responsibility rather than relying on mainstream doctors, uh, or traditional solutions so with your whole journey what role did self-responsibility actually play for you and how did taking ownership in your health empower you to make those changes and find those people that um, ended up helping you oh look just um i just would research i would look around i, I just took the point of view of i was going to be open-minded i would do whatever it took you know um i, I would just do whatever it blooming well took to get on top of it you know and 
I just research anything and everything. If they were a weird healer, I would at least research into it. You know, if they were kind of said a crystal could fix it, I was open to that, you know, anything. And um, the interesting thing I discovered, though, from the whole thing was how, when I look back on the whole thing, all these different steps that I took and money that I spent, I'm like, God, the next generation is going to have this a lot easier because a lot of this was just really understanding the power of the mind and frequencies. You know, it's a bit like, you and I sitting on this webinar right now talking to people like 30 years ago, 20 years ago, this didn't happen, you know, whereas now we've accepted the fact that frequencies can, um, like, I don't know what the frequency of this channel is that we're doing the webinar, but let's say it was 729.1785. So as soon as people click on that link or live stream, they're on 729.1815 and they can hear it. As soon as they get into 825.57, they won't, they won't basically hear this webinar. And then I'm sitting here in my room and all of, and then my image gets turned into, into light. The light um, waves go through, through the ethers. Anyone who's got a device tuned into this frequency sees my image appear on the screen. It's extraordinary when you think about it. And so what really got me thinking is, well, I think it's the same with health. And that's what I actually realized. Like doing the etheric body clearing, one of the things the lady was using was a machine that would check me, my frequencies, and show where my frequencies are out in my organs and when they were out. She'd give me remedies and essences and oils and other things to balance the frequencies back to normal. And that would fix me. That's how I fixed hay fever, which I had for years and wouldn't really go. And yeah, I decided to realize that everything is frequency and energy. That's all it is. And as soon as you rebalance the frequency and energy, so at first I thought, now you've got to go to a homeopath or got to go to a ferric healer, which, and then I thought, well, maybe I can do a ferric healing on myself and then on other people. So I started experimenting with it and testing it and measuring it and found I was getting exactly the same results, um, no matter how I was doing it. And then I read about the, the, the pyramid study where they had a physical pyramid and people going in the pyramid up to certain dimensions would see healings and they would see improvement in their health. And then they tested a mentally projected pyramid and got the same results. So it made me think, well, you know, all it is is a frequency. So anything that's a flower essence is a frequency. Anything that's an oil is a frequency. So what if I transmitted this into me? And I was noticing things that I would like start to transmute vitamin C into me, then, then get tested. I didn't need it anymore. You know, things like that. Mm. Um, yeah, it'd be interesting to talk a bit more about that because you we, when you look back, say, 20 years ago, whenever you mentioned that, I mean, um, even probably about five years ago, you'd kind of be seen a bit more on the weird or, or woo-woo side of things. But now I know from your research and from like various other people that I've seen, it's actually becoming more of a trend. And a lot of people are starting to actually realize that etheric medicine is the way of the future. Similar to um, when mental health 20 years ago wasn't recognized, that was the next level of evolution with people's health. But it seems like etheric medicine is now being the next level of evolution and science is backing that. So can you share a bit more on the science behind um, this whole trend? Yeah, let me just show you something. So I've got a couple of books here. This is Ken Wilber's Religion of Tomorrow. And this is Neville Goddard's, you know, complete reader, which goes into all kinds of stuff around energy and this kind of stuff. This is a really good book. I mean, Wilbur wrote a very detailed book on why religions uh, these days are not really helping society and actually, if anything, working against it. And what the new religion of the future of the 21st century needs to look like. And the biggest thing he said, it's more inclusive of different beliefs. It's more um, awake to the possibility of other beliefs. But he also said it's going to be aware of, of the relationship with science and, and religion. Not, it's not going to kind of see them as either or. Whereas, for example, last um, century, it was very much either or, like either a yogi or spiritual or you're a scientist and they were both opposed. Whereas he said the new one, we'll see how they all actually work together, quantum science and things like that. And so... The biggest thing with Ken Wilber in his fantastic book is he talks about the future, he said, of, of medicine. He said beyond mental health. He said mental health was like a evolution. He said the next stage of evolution is going to be a um is going to be ferric medicine. He said people realize that everything is frequency and they'll be able to heal and fix things by changing frequency. He said, that's going to become the new thing. And Dr. Venus Williams, a PhD professor in Romania who I met at an event, she wrote a whole paper on this and said, yeah, literally they've discovered that anything that happens in your physical life, whether it's um, health-wise, financial, relationship, abuse, breakdowns, it's already programmed in your ferric body. 
or what's called your morphogenetic field, your auric field or your chakras, and then that manifests in the physical. And they find as soon as you can clear things from the morphogenetic field, before it manifests in the physical, you can save yourself a lot of heartache and you can fix a health issue. A, a good example was I had ongoing gallbladder stuff for years from about 2010 for about eight years. You know, I had a big cleanse using Dr. Richard Schultz, which saved me having my gallbladder taken out, passing my gallstones. And every year on average, I had to redo it. And then I remember finally someone said to me, well, why don't you just clear it at the etheric level? And I thought, oh gosh, I should have done that. So I I worked with a guy who helped me do it, um, clear it from the etheric level. And as soon as I did that, um, it was amazing. My whole um, gallbladder just basically, you know, I think about six weeks later, it took for the etheric body to fully manifest physical. I went on another cleanse, passed some gallstones, did a few other things, and then never had a reoccurrence. So I'm just so passionate about this. I love this stuff. It's just the future of medicine, and I want to be in the cutting edge of it. Edge of it. Yeah. So really, in simple terms, do you see the etheric body kind of the root of everything? So the etheric body, whatever is stored in there, whether it's emotions, trauma, or um, whatever language you like to use for it, whatever is stored in your etheric body, is that the main cause behind physical symptoms, uh, mental health, emotional? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And it's not me saying it. It's what I mean, I discovered this more by sense and intuition and pioneering and trying things. But now, of course, scientists and professors and, you know, homeopaths and more and more people are starting to know this and acknowledge this now. It's becoming a much, much more aware. Like Australia is a little bit behind on this, but like Europe's pretty ahead of it now. And, you know, there's an Oxford University professor, um, Amit Goswani, who wrote a whole book and paper on it. And he pretty much says, yeah, quantum physics and etheric stuff is very much the way of the future so yeah look it's kind of um just purely intention you know one of my favorite stories which actually is a true story of the oxford medical journal tells a story of a guy who had a brain tumor and he you know he's given an x amount of time to live and the guy ends up with a doctor and at the time they're doing a vaccine trial or not a vaccine sorry a drug trial on a brain tumor clearing drug which they believed actually worked so he took the drug and within about a week or two, his brain tumor was gone in remission. So they thought, awesome. And then about six weeks later, the guy is reading another journal and, he, and, and it tells how the, how, the, how the trial of the drug failed. So within about a week, his brain tumor came back. So he goes to the doctor and says, it's come back. And the doctor worked out what had happened. So the doctor got him a basically a needle with some water in it, purely water, and said, oh, this is the second version of, of the drug. This is getting better results. And he put it in him and the back, and basically his um his brain tumor went again, disappeared. So he was all happy. And then about some weeks later, he read that a drug had been shelled because it was a failure. He realized the doctor had lied to him. He was furious at the doctor. His brain tumor came back and he died about a month later. Now, as you can see there, it really was. And of course, then you got Dr. Richard, Brand, Richard Bandler, who had people getting dentistry or getting teeth taken out with no anesthetic by getting them to tell their brain that they had anesthetic and program them into itself. So any kind of etheric thing is just, it's kind of more and more taking off and it's very much the way of the future. And yeah, you can, it's, it's a great way to cure up not only chronic health conditions or, or not, or certainly make a real difference in it. Like keep in mind, I, I, I'm not going to say it's to be all and end all. I mean, I've used it in conjunction with physical therapies and food diets and other stuff. But the more and more I'm doing it, the more and more I'm convinced it's going to become the way of the future. A bit like AI is becoming the way of the future. Hmm. Well, what about like, because what I wanted to also ask about the etheric body is that it's a lot more than just physical symptoms. Like I know one thing you've kind of been testing around and playing around with a bit, not just yourself, but I know plenty of other people do it as well, is how you can actually use it to manifest and um, like more finances, like uh, outside of health. So what... What other areas can it be used for outside of just healing health? Look, um, I think we're not even close to fully, you know, tapping into the potential. I mean, Patanjali, you know, in the Yoga Sutras, um, Hindu master, you know, he talks about the various teachings and, you know, the Yoga Sutras give various sayings and they talk about everything, about the ability to levitate, the ability to go invisible, go walk through walls, all kinds of stuff. And so, I mean... The capabilities of what you can do with a ferric body, I think, are frightening. I think we're just not even close to tapping into it. And, you know, there's books by like Earth's Energies by Adrian Clark and, um, you know, your autobiography of a yogi, which goes through and shows, for example, you know, 
Dr. Adrian Clark, who's a researcher, found a Buddhist monk, you know, literally levitating in thin air. And he asked him, how do you do it? He goes, oh, it's easy. You just see like air. I see a solid block. He said, in other words, he had convinced it. You know, I've met someone who actually can bend spoons. His wife could actually bend spoons. And, you know, there's people who can do extraordinary kind of things. So the, look, you can certainly use it with, and I've met people who have used it financially. Um, I've used it myself financially in various things. I mean, we call it manifestation, but, you know, there's no question your ferric body has programming. You suffer a trauma financially, or your parents do when you're younger, you often pick it up and it's in your etheric field. And then if you start to clear it out, you get more kind of clearer. You know, like for me, moving into business was difficult and moving into being a spiritual teacher pastor was difficult because of my programming in my ferric field. And I remember meeting, you know, the capabilities in one of the workshops I went to, Jeff Jones in America, hasn't eaten for 25 years. It's been tested. You know, he doesn't, he just simply has programmed himself that whenever he drinks water, he gets his food. Jeff, you know, he was financially in a major trouble. He did some etheric body work on his finances, went all out to do it. And within a few weeks, he not only got out of debt, but he manifested one of the largest sales in history in that particular field. And he pretty much sorted out his debts and became financially independent. You know, I've heard of people manifesting lottery wins now, you know. So etheric body covers everything. You know, our financial imprint, our programming on our health, everything is all in the etheric body, our relationship programming, what we believe we're entitled to everything mm. what about like maintaining it because obviously you can clear the etheric body and get rid of anything in it but what kind of changes or habits in your life going back to your story and even talking about your life right now but i know you do a lot of uh, etheric body healing work but for people that don't understand it is it just like a one-off solution that gets you to solve like a major problem in your life or is there maintenance involved habits you have to change in your life mindset beliefs or um, can you share a little bit on that? Yep. Sorry, I missed that last part. What was that again? It just kind of faded out. So pretty much like, is it a one-off solution using etheric clearing or is it an ongoing maintenance? And do you have to oh, change yeah. any habits or mindset in your life? Yeah, look, think of it like having a bath or doing Pilates or doing gym. Like, I mean, let's say that you go and strengthen your back and get better if you had back soreness or you do Pilates and you improve your flexibility. And then after that, you go, okay, great, I fixed it. Then you stop doing it. You know, three months later, you're going to be just about back to where you were before. So you have this thing called entropy. So it's like a house. If you clean a house regularly, you know, you got if you if you went and did a big spring clean on your house today and then not do a single thing for three months, you're going to have a pretty dirty house in three months, you know, because so your ferric body is no different. I mean, you work into the world. You know, etheric body, they found that we pick up energies, we feel other people's energies, we feel energies of people around about us, we feel energies of, um, you know, we, we, we do, we are vulnerable to pick up people's energies. And if and when we're picking up people's energies, um, they can affect us. And so I, I know Raymond Grace, who taught me a lot, and most people, I do, I do clearings regularly, like I use my baba or I just do it in my mind. But every day I clear myself from the mass consciousness or I do stuff to keep my body and clear myself pretty regularly or keep my chakras clean. And in shamanic school, Alberta Valola says you really want to clean your chakras daily because they get dirty really quickly as you're around different people. So, yeah, you got to maintain it as well as actually doing the work and detoxing your ferric body. So what I did and I personally strongly recommend is you get a detox of your ferric body. You got to detox it out like you would detox your physical body. And then you got to maintain it. So that's kind of why we're going to be doing the workshop. And then also after the workshop, doing ongoing stuff for people who really want to go through, do a detailed deep detox of their ferric body. Because I did this over many weeks, a full detox. And, you know, difference it made was massive. You know, the big reason I got to the health I'm in today. Mm. Um, and I wouldn't say my health's always perfect. I just know how to fix things pretty quickly, you know, when it happens. Yeah. What about going back to your story and sharing a bit more on that? What kind of what would you say in some of the biggest lessons you learned, especially around self responsibility and um, taking things on for yourself? What were the biggest lessons and advice you'd give to people who are going through something similar, who or who just want to understand this for themselves a bit more? You definitely have to be very open minded because even studies on consciousness have found that people who are really believe I've. We've done etheric healing um, webinars with trainings of clients and groups. And it's very vast the differences because there's two things happening when I do it with people. One is that um, 
there's the faith of the healer. So I know the slightest doubt it can fix. And then there's the faith of the person who's being healed. And I've especially found a lot of women are very good at this. A lot of women who are really just feelers and very sensitive, they heal very quickly. And I remember one etheric body healing on doing someone who had a car accident. And they were so open to it. They didn't just clear their etheric body. They instantly healed physically. All their pain left in their body was well, you know? Um, so yeah, look, there's, the main thing is to be very open to it. And you want to educate yourself about this. It's like being aware of mental health. If you don't understand the etheric body, you're not willing to put the work in to educate it. And either you've got to go ahead and do all the hard work yourself and spend years working out like I did or come along like something like the workshop. That's why I'm doing the workshop and doing the free webinar to teach to give people an intro about it. And then those who really go, oh, this is what I want to do. There's going to be opportunity for workshops and, you know, working with us to train you in that area. Hmm. Yeah, definitely. And last question before we move on is how did it actually change your life? Like how's, I know it's made, you've told me personally, but for everyone out there who hasn't heard your story, what impact has it had on your life since you've healed yourself by using all of this and being able to work it out for yourself, like financially, um, relationships and just all areas of your life, what impact did it have? Oh, look, I, I, I reckon, and people who are in chronic health, and I don't know, I'm sure there's people who've got challenges it's horrible it just really impacts your life like when you got back pain it's it's awful or if you're getting asthma attacks it's horrible you know um you know if you've got um yeah if you've got like like all that stuff i don't know if anyone has had that i mean or kidney stones but i mean obviously i can't say that for sure but i've had women who've had gallbladder issues who've also been pregnant have said you know, getting gallbladder attacks is as bad, if not worse, than childbirth. Now, I'm only reporting what another woman have told me, and that must be pretty bad because I've seen women go through childbirth. And having gone through gallbladder pain myself and attacks, it's just ghastly. I mean, I, I remember my, my first gallbladder attack, you know, it was horrific, you know. And so, and even when I had that back and fibromyalgia and chronic fatigue, it's horrible. So it's just made my life a lot, a lot better. And, you know, and after you go get out of that, almost anything in comparison you're grateful for you know like i mean obviously i've got challenges in my life still in various different areas but it's it's interesting i was saying to someone i don't really i mean look you've always got to keep on top of it and have little minor things like of course i had a very gentle stomach bug the other week when i was in thailand you know so it's not like i've suddenly turned into always in perfect health but the thing is i noticed i was able to fix myself really quickly i did a ferret work on my on my stomach i balanced my digestion i fixed my ferret body and it got it got better pretty quickly you know and i knew what to look for i thought i'm clearly processing some emotional stuff and stuff like that so you know often i can when i do get something come up i can clear it and fix it really quickly so just been overall better quality of life a lot happier I've applied it with relationships even, you know, and seeing better quality relationships with women and people in my life. I've applied it in working in even with governments as much as I can. And, you know, and I, I mean, look, I've had my moments, but overall to, you know, stay in harmony as much as I can, um, certainly with finances and businesses as well and clearing things out. Because even your businesses have a fabric body, your finances do. And I remember one stage, one of my businesses were doing really badly. And when I checked on it, the etheric body was really out. So I cleared the etheric body of my business and, you know, very quickly started to improve. I think that's a good point because, yeah, everything around you, your reality is just an extension of you. So whatever's going yeah. on in you is going to affect your outer reality. But anyway, that pretty much wraps up the questions I had for you. So the biggest thing, I guess, um, to take away from that is the importance of self-responsibility. Um, that's why we've decided to run um, this Be Your Own Physician workshop and why we've done this series. So for people listening and who want to find out more about how to do something similar to you and use it for their own journey to be their own physician and be able to heal themselves from whatever they're going through and understand the newest science developments around etheric medicine and how to use it, what would you say to them? Like, where can they find more information? Oh, look, there's two ways to, le to learn more about this. One is you kind of go and you research and read and do your own stuff online. And yeah, you know, you can do that work. I mean, or come along tomorrow to our free training, you know? Um, come along, listen to the live one um, or listen to the recording. It's going to go for about 90 minutes or so, 75 to 90. And I really go through it in depth. You know, I give a bit of an outline. I look at the scientific basis for it. I look at the religious yogis, what they teach. I explain what it is. I show you how flower essences and other things and how they work. 
how I've used it. And in real time, we'll do some work on you, you know, and some people will notice the real difference. And, you know, some people will see the difference and feel the difference in real time and possibly, you know, like last one, even experience a bit of a mini healing or healing. So, yeah, no, you'll be, get a chance to come and learn more about it and see it and feel it in real time. Um, and and then after that, for both, when we finished it, it'll be good content. And then those who want to stay on afterwards will be sharing about the workshop we're running and the different programs to help people master it in their life for their health and their relationships and their finances. Yeah. So if you're interested to come along to that, the link is in the caption if you're watching this live on Facebook. And uh, if you're watching the replay, it'll be linked in the description below. So that's it from me. Any final tips, words from you, Warren, before we end? No, I'll just get my bubble right now and let's just infuse, you know, whatever flower essences that are needed for people who are listening to this right now. So something simple like that. And just breathe and just get a sense. So what I want to do is just infuse, you know, whatever from the Barecki's, um Manual of Homeopathy and Flower Essences. Just, you know, the highest priority one that you need right now just to balance your ferric body, put you more in a state of rest. I'm already feeling better. I've been very tired. I've been working long hours in the last week and I was noticing I was feeling pretty drained. And just by doing this, I'm already, you know, feeling some stuff kind of, you know, noticing my energy starting to revitalize um, and things like that. And yeah, that's just a very simple one. I'll do a bit more about tomorrow night. If anyone's kind of noticed or felt anything, some might not feel anything, you know, does it, but etheric medicine, some bit, if you're very sensitive, you can feel it straight away. Some notice the effects after a few days. I've got clients after that that just notice something's a bit different. Um, but yeah, if you've noticed anything, put in the chat. But I definitely would encourage you come along to the free webinar. You know, no risk for you really. Just um, learning and learning something, especially your chronic health. Um, come along and have a listen, and hopefully it can help and serve you in your journey. Because the idea of, of any workshops we run is we're not just going to get up there and say this will fix everything. We do encourage you to continue to work with doctors and work with your other things, but start to do that. And bit by bit, you'll start to get more empowerment with your health. You know, I had an infection even some months ago and I didn't ignore the doctor. I went and saw them, got a prescription for antibiotics, so I didn't, but I didn't use it. I thought, well, let's just see how I go if I can infuse vitamin C and other stuff to fix my infection. If in three days it's not better, completely gone, I will go and do it. And within about two days, it was all fixed and gone. So... Hmm. Well, yeah, thanks for that. Always good to hear your story and hopefully uh, people listening took value out of that. Uh, that wraps up. We'll see you guys at the training tomorrow. Awesome. Thanks, everyone. Look forward to seeing you there.